studio is sponsored by MPB. Bored with the obvious reality, I find my only fascination in transforming it into a subjective point of view. Without touching my subject, I want to come to the moment when, through the pure concentration of seeing, the composed picture becomes more made than taken. And what a wonderful quote to open today's video, but also, of course, to welcome you to another episode of Books. And today we're traveling all the way to New York and we're going to be looking at a book by Ernst Haas. And this book is New York in Color. So we're going to be looking at this book, photos, etc. And we're going to be discussing five ways as to how he creates very powerful and great images. So without further ado, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable and let's go straight. To another video. Okay, so in the introduction of this book, it is referred that Haas himself took his time to adapt himself to New York City. In fact, the architecture and the tall buildings represented quite a challenge for him in the beginning of his journey there. Let us not forget that Haas was actually an Austrian-American photographer who had only moved to New York City in 1950 at the age of 29. So it's safe to say that this episode can serve as the American counterpart to the episode that we've had before, where we explored the work of Fred Herzog, who mostly photographed in Vancouver, Canada. And much like Herzog, Ernst Haas had a period of adaptation in which he tried to know the city as best as he could, by getting to know its good, but also the more impoverished and darker areas. And while it's easy to say that time will bring a better understanding of things we're often trying to comprehend, I think a key here was also Haas's attitude that later made him extremely successful in the way he captured the city. Because as we go through this book, his pictures communicate a photographer that is more than committed, immersed in his reality, immersed in this city and discovering new ways of photographing it and essentially developing his own photographic language. So what we're talking about here is that the way he creates great photographs revolves around his total immersion in his craft. And by doing this, the photographer is, in my opinion, of course, able to develop new ways of communicating his vision and portraying what he wants or chooses to portray. And in this case, we all know Ernst Haas's work was groundbreaking in the ways he made use of color and motion and blur in particular. Let us not forget as well that his first one-man exhibition featuring his color photography at the Museum of Modern Art took place between August to October 1962, which was reviewed by the New York Times at the time as being a milestone in color photography's development as an artistic medium. And this, my friends, all happened way before William Eggleston's famous first exhibition at MoMA as well in 1976. And this brings me to the second topic I want to talk to you about, and that is the, you know, the way, one of the ways I believe that Ernst has as well, he's able to create these images, is because he's really good at embracing the unknown. Um, and he does this with embracing color, which at the time wasn't really that, you know, famous with photographers or for that matter really well seen amongst you know photographers and you know with a foreign city foreign people so everything is kind of foreign to him and he's able to embrace this unknown this you know unmeasured in a way to create these pictures and i feel like this is a quality that all of us should have as photographers this openness and this willingness to embrace the unknown and i kind of had been researching you know for this video before my trip that i took last week to amsterdam in the netherlands and basically 
it really helped me um, understand this idea or this necessity of us photographers to embrace those things that are foreign to us. And so for me, it helped me. And I kept thinking of this as I walked through the streets and I saw these things were very foreign to me, you know, very different things, very different sides, textures, colors, etc. So I feel like it's worth to mention to you as well. And when looking back, this is something that I definitely learned from Ernst Haas. As looking at his own time and place, I recognized that he had to choose embracing the unknown, the New York landscape, color film, which at the time wasn't very popular, as I said, and the idea of you as a photographer to blend in with what you're seeing and capturing, identifying, let's put it this way, the flow or rhythm of a given scenery, it's super important. In talking about rhythm and flow, this of course is a bridge to the next way I believe um, Ernst As is able to create these images. It's because going through his work to, you know, this book in particular as well, and seeing the flow of his work, his images, I feel like you can't ignore the fact that he's extremely, extremely good at recognizing the visual rhythm and flow of a scene. And so he's able to piece together or use, um, you know, elements, uh, photographic elements, motion, blur, color, lines, uh, you know, multiples, etc., etc., to create these images. And I feel like it's very good to have a look at these things in particular. And so the way he is creative, playing around with motion, blur colors is truly incredible and he did this for all his work if you have a look at his commercial work but also at his bullfighting images independently of whether you support this activity or not just look at it through what they are and you can't really deny that he truly was a master at what he does and this ties in with the quote I read to you in the beginning of the video. This ability comes from wanting to transform the boring reality into a subjective interpretation of it. Like any artist does with, say, painting, music or writing. And he talks about doing this through the pure concentration of seeing. He does this by precisely identifying the elements of interest in a given scene and organizing them as if choreographing a dance between lines, colors, shapes and other elements. Which totally validates the photographer's point when he says that the picture becomes more made than taken. Now on points four and five I wanted to talk to you about specific elements of you know composition of the image and so we're going to be starting by multiples and we're going to be breaking down set images and see how we can learn with this idea from Ernst Haas. If you've watched my last video, you know that I talked about some of the elements I love and look for in a good photograph. And one of these was multiples. And of course, this was inspired by Ernst Haas. Because going through his work, I noticed a pattern of interest for multiples. Multiple subjects, multiple faces, multiple similar shapes, similar colors. So whatever it was, basically there's this interest by the photographer on multiples of the same thing. If we look at these two particular images, hats and a marching band, we see something similar, this interplay with motion and blur, but also the biggest interest in these photos are precisely the multiples of the same thing. Hats and the men in the marching band with similar shapes and colors, which of course creates very interesting images. If we look one page back, we see this beautiful photograph of the traffic's reflection. And here the idea of multiples is produced by reflection. It doesn't mean that there's necessary three women with the same coat going by, three cars with the same exact colors. And looking at other photos like the photographs of swimmers, we can definitely see how Ernst Haas creates amazing compositions around this idea of exploring numbers and multiples of things. So this might be potentially something that you and I can take to our photography and hopefully improving or at least having some fun. Now I want to pause us here for a minute because you're probably curious about the cameras or gear that um, Ernst has used and deservingly so. I was curious as well and from what I could gather and read from information on the internet, he first started with a Roliflex TLR when he was in Austria but then he kind of migrated to the 35 mil format and he you know acquired a Leica 3 then a Leica M3 and then by I think you know 
mid to late years of his career. He worked with the Leica Flex, pairing all these cameras with, of course, very different, you know, um, lenses. Now, I can't tell you where really he bought his cameras at the time, but one thing I can tell you is where you can buy your cameras today. And if you're in need, of course, of gear, you know, whether it's cameras, you know, film for filmmaking, photography, lenses, you know, tripods, lights, etc. There's one place I recommend and that is MPB. And with MPB you can do three things. You can buy used gear, sell your own gear or trade what you already have for what you want to get. And whilst these are the only three options of what you can do through MPB, the options of what you can have access to are basically unlimited. As a look at MPB's catalog will show you lenses for both photography or filmmaking, cameras for general or any particular use, for entry level to more specialized photographers or filmmakers, as well as an array of accessories you're most likely familiar with, tripods, filters, etc. And every time you get something from MPB, you get a six month warranty with a brand whose platform is hassle free. You insert your details, get your quote and you book your fee collection. And one thing I can also tell you about MPB is that a lot of people are satisfied with their, you know, purchases, their experience, because over 25,000 people have actually left a very positive review on Trustpilot. So I feel like it's safe to say that, you know, you can check them out and see what they have for you, what are your options, what you're looking to sell, get in touch with them and their website will be down below for more information and you know that they've been a you know long time sponsor here on our channel and I really appreciate them for kindly supporting the channel, for you know allowing me to carry on being creative with you know my stuff and my videos and of course I want to thank you for watching this segment and now let's go back to the video and find out the fifth way Ernst has is able to create beautiful images. And last but not the least, I want to talk about perspective and movement. Now, I know that this is going to sound very silly or perhaps very basic, but when I look at, you know, Ernst as his book, this particular book, and also his work in general, I feel like it's never too much to say, look around you when you're photographing, but also look up and down because perspective and movement can definitely change things. And this might seem extremely basic, but I want to break down some images to show you how he creates very, very simple, but also very, very good compositions. And I want to bring your interest to this particular image, which is titled Below the Third Avenue L where at first glance nothing is really straight, in fact you feel the image being pulled more towards the left due to the weight of the shadows and the pieces of cardboard and fabric on the ground as opposed to the emptiness of the right side. And it's really beautiful in great part because of the perspective which enables us to see this simply yet very interesting play of light and shadows, which is almost theatrical in a way. And if you look at this image, you immediately become interested in this scene, not just because of these two men talking to each other, but also due to the fact that their shadows combined with this perspective introduces a degree of subjectivity. And if we break down another image, this one taken in 1952, we observe a similar effect. Perspective here, which also takes a higher angle, gives us this beautiful interplay of lines, shapes and colors, with the out of focus man in the back adding to this abstraction. So I think it's great to look at Ernst Haas, particularly in these aspects of perspective, movement and composition. And this has been all for today. I really, really want to thank you for watching, for supporting the channel. It truly means a lot. This video was actually picked by the members community and when I give them like a list of books and we do a lot of things there, polls, you know, exclusive posts. And if you want to uh, actually participate more, if you are able to support, of course, you can do so by joining the members community. You'll have access to an exclusive series we're doing over there of videos. There is titled Archives. We go through some historically important photos. We break them down, but we also learn as we go along. And I guess that, you know, if you want to know more about what I'm doing, you can do so by checking out my Instagram and all of that, you know, links to that are down below. My website as well. My print shop will be open very, very soon. And hopefully they'll, you know, give you a glimpse as well of what I've been photographing. And I guess that, you know, 
I've, it's been all for today, so I want to thank you again for watching. I want to thank MPB for kindly sponsoring today's video. Don't forget, the links are down below. And yeah, I guess that I want to say my goodbyes. So as usual, stay safe, keep shooting, keep creating, keep learning, and I'm out. Peace. Seen it all, you can all been a fit to Fem for talk, I can't fall in love